welcome back to the channel. Today I'm working on this steel backpack blower. The issues that it's having is when you want to shut it off, something's wrong with the wiring inside where you have to turn the handle sideways to get it to shut off. So that tells me there's something going on with the wiring. So I'm going to go take the handle apart, probably the back cover, and then we're going to look at the line itself and make sure there's no cracks or splits. Spoiler alert, I was able to diagnose what the exact issue was with the backpack blower and it was the electrical connection that I will show you in a minute when I take this apart but the wire that comes back from the handle back through the back of the backpack and up into here has one of those little tab connectors that threads into the ignition coil and what happened was I guess because of all the vibration it was not I also want to mention that I used my multimeter on this one and I set it to the uh, continuity so when you have continuity it'll beep so I did that on both wires on the backpack and they so what I did there was I took the 5t20 screws and the 1t27 screw out took the top cover off Underneath of that, there's two wires that connect to the kill switch that run all the way back to the ignition coil. And I did one wire, and then I did the other, and it both beeped, which told me there was continuity. So there was no actual break in the wiring itself from the ignition coil up to the handle. So then that told me if there's no break, it's something else, and that's when I saw that the wire and the connection on the ignition coil, that little tab, was loose. And like I said, I clamped that down and made it solid and that fixed the problem but now from here I'm going to explain what needs to be done to actually do that and you have one two three and four t27 screws that need to come out two t27s on the side here to take the air filter box off and three t27 screws to take the recoil off and these are machine screws what I mean by that is they're a fine thread and the plastic one is a coarse thread so when you put this back together make sure that you have that um, separated properly okay I'm going to take the spark plug boot off I went ahead and took the four screws out of here and I loosened up the three T20 screws okay I'll put that boot to the side and this cover, you can maneuver it around. You don't have to actually take the spark plug out. All right, so if you look down here, you can see this is the one connection I was talking about. And before, I was able to kind of just slide it back and forth so it wasn't making a good connection. So I was able to get needle nose pliers down in there and clamp it down. And now it's working properly. And I'll show you in a minute when I put everything back together that it works fine. If you need to replace the wiring though, if let's just say, this gets bent or there's an exposed wire, you might be able to salvage it by fusing it together. But if you have to put the wiring in all together, put a new line in, it's a little more complex than just doing what I showed you. You will need to take the five T27 screws out of the handle, the T27 behind it, pop the cover off, and it's a little more intricate inside and you'll have to figure it out on your own pop the wire out, pull it all the way back in the back. There's another T27 that holds the wiring and the linkage that goes to the throttle on the carburetor. And you might actually need to break the carburetor loose because when I had this apart earlier, it was hard to get this. I don't think there was enough clearance to get the spark plug boot and everything underneath here. So I think you would need to take the carburetor off to get the clearance you need to get everything out. Also, there's a T27 that kind of keeps the throttle linkage like all together so it's not uh, sloppy. And then there's two T27 bolts, two T27 screws that hold the ignition coil on down there. Again, if you had to do that, you're also looking at um, replacing the ignition coil and all that, that you would have to re-gap the ignition coil onto the over the flywheel so you would actually need uh, like a business card I'm not sure the depth but that would be another thing that you would have to keep in mind if you had to replace the wiring on this so 
that's fixed. Um, I'm going to put it all back together, start it up, and show you guys how it works. One more thing before I button it up, there is another wire that goes to the back of the ignition coil. So if you would take this apart, and this was fine on the top, just be aware that there is a smaller one on the very back. It also has a tab like this, but it's smaller, and that could be the issue. Um, again, if you would do that, you would have to take the ignition coil off, and you'd have to measure your depth so that the engine would run properly. And all the other thing I was telling you about when I had the multimeter out was when I had the handle off, I touched here to the other side and it showed that it that the wire was good and I did the same thing over here I was able to just get the uh, the tip of it very down at the bottom and do the same thing and it had continuity so I knew that the wiring was good it was just a bad connection so the continuity was there but when you wanted to kill it it just didn't have a good ground and that's why it wasn't shutting off a quick second to show you the difference between the, the machine screws here and the plastic screws on this side and again, it's simple to put back together. Four plastic screws on the corners. The machine screws, three of them, go with the recoil that go in here. And then the two T27 screws that attach the air filter on. And the spark plug boot. And then you should be good to go. So we have it in the starting position. I already choked it. I'm gonna give it a pull. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I'm more of a visual learner, so hopefully I was able to explain enough and show enough that you can get something useful from this video. Anyway, um, appreciate you guys watching, hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time.